Hey everyone, it's Joan Isaias here from The Automator. And today we got this really great script. Sometimes you're trying to automate an older Windows program. They have the old file menus and it can be done in a certain way without hopping, but we wrote a script that will write the syntax for you. So it'll be very, very easy to use. We have both in V1 or V2 code to, to write it. It's a V1 script. Um, but before we do, let me tell you real quick, Automator, we're the number one trusted source for teaching people how to use AutoHotKey. We can help teach people how to automate repetitive tasks, develop custom applications, or adapt programs to their needs. And all of our courses have a 200% money back guarantee. So give us a try on that. Mm -hmm. All right, Isaiah, so why don't you go ahead and show how the tool works? Yeah, definitely. So the tool, uh, as you can see here in the code, is a very small piece of code. It's just well, almost 200 lines. So it's not like a crazy long kind of thing. It does leverage a few things with uh, DLL calls and stuff like that. But I noticed that it is using the send notify message. And that, there's another function that we can use, which is the send message or the post messages. Those two guys do the same as the send notify message, at least very common, a very similar thing. So what I decided is what you said, hey, let's let's go ahead and run it first. Let's go ahead and open it. Menu search. It is a taskbar application that only comes up when you use the control G hotkey. Now it will tell you if this window does not have a Windows 32 menu. Now this is the cool thing. We usually use it when we have exhausted many ways of automating a program. And then we say, hey, does it have a menu? Because you can automate a lot of stuff with the menu only. I will show you in a bit what, what I mean by that. Um, and then we will try it. So this tool, it will tell you if it has or it doesn't have. So let's take a look at an older program. Sadly, in Windows 11, Notepad is no longer a normal Windows 32 program. So this will not work in Windows 11. But this version in Windows 10 does still have the window, the menu there. And when you press the hard key, as it is a menu, it will list all the options in the menu with the path on how to get to them. So view, zoom, zoom in. If I go here, I will look the view, zoom, zoom in. So it is it's just displaying the path to those guys, right? And once you show them how, if they're not sure, you can test it. Right, that's what I was going to say. Like, basically, uh, the next step would be, hey, if you look at one of them, like the font, let's see, uh, I think it was on, well, I don't know where it is. Let's type font. Oh, right. Find it, yeah. right. So it searches, it has a, a built-in search. So this one here, the font one, if you double click it, it would open the action or send the notification for the action as if you just clicked on it here. So it's the same thing as just clicking this menu item right there, which is amazing. Well, I would rephrase that slightly as I ask, because just so people really understand the real power of this, it's not, we're not imitating bringing up that GUI and then clicking the thing. It's no. sending a very specific message to that thing to pop it open, which is why right. it's like it's an API approach, right? This is why we right. should get so excited about it. And just so you understand exactly what we mean by that, there is this DLL column 995 that it sends a message to that window. And that message, when the window receives it, it understands what to do with it. That's what is going on. So it's not it's not interacting with the GUI in any right. way. We're just sending a message and the window says, oh, that's what you meant. Okay, let me do it. Which is basically the best way to automate Windows if you could. The, the difficult part is figuring out what the message is that that particular window understands. So now, now that we know that we could do that, now that we know that we can get the thing and we can filter on the menu to, you know, cut or copy. So here's the thing. After we get that, and we could double click it to perform the action. Fine, perfect. What we just added to it is the fact that now I, I want to have the code to do the same, but in my program. So I want my program to automate this program. How do I get the code? So what we did is we allowed you to select whether you are using it for V1 code and V2 code. The code difference is minimal. It's just a percent sign. Yeah. So you could so you can see how how far apart they are in this sense. But the point is you select the type of code that you want. And with control pressed, you double click on it 
and it tells you that the action was copied to the clipboard, which you can then go ahead and paste anywhere. And it has the post message command. Let's just put it in to my toolkit here. It has the post message with all the parameters already set for what I want, okay? And the good thing about it is I can just run the script. This is a V1 script because of the percent sign there. So when I run it, the notice that this window didn't even disappear, but the other one brought the font window right there. So it knows what to do, even if the window is not active, even if, if it's not visible or whatever, when I run that message, the window knows what to do and it just brings it over into, um, uh, into view. There it is. So one, so now, yeah, go ahead. One thing to keep in mind, which, you know, if you're used to programming on a hockey, you'd spot this, but right now the title is untitled notepad. Now, if we save that as something else, it wouldn't work, it right? Work. So yeah. you do want to adapt your code a bit to be working a little, you know, in a way it'll get the active title, right? Like right. You, Make sure you adjust it to where it says, well, it's always going to say notepad or something, right? To right, exactly. Just for example, you could do this, but to do that, you have to uh, set that. title match mode right. two. So those kind of little details, you have to do them because the, the way how I'm matching the window is the full title that I'm getting from the program itself anyways. So that's okay. Um, and you can change this matching mode here to whatever you feel more comfortable with. So right. I'm, I'm just, I just put it that way because I want to make sure that I get the ID. That's the way how I got it. So now, um, if I decide, no, hold on, I actually wanted the V2 code, I can do the same. I just look for my thing, control, double click, gets my action copied to the clipboard. And you will notice that it's basically the same thing except for that percent sign there. In V1, you have to force an expression. In V2, everything is an expression. So that's it. If I switch to V2, it should work just exactly the same. You will get your font window right here, no problem. Now, the funny thing about this is that there are many programs that have this menu. And, and, and again, there's a lot of things that you can do, like copy, awesome. pasting, replacing, go, go to a line, or you know, if we go to here, here in this menu, I could switch the languages to different languages. So for example, if I say Lua, look at that. Now, if I change the difference, look at the color. So, so I could manipulate or change several things depending on what options are here. So if for whatever reason, I do not have a button or I do not have anything that allows me to switch the languages, I can still perform the action if it is in my menu. And you would be surprised about that. A lot of programs have a very lot full of their, menus. Yeah, like very full menus with almost all of the actions that they perform in those menus. So it is great. So now if I hit- and to reiterate, we're not yeah. sending a mouse click onto a thing. It's programmatically triggering it, which is just phenomenal. Right. Now notice that as soon as I hit Control-G, I did get- the menus for site for auto hotkey this time, I could look for, let's say, language. And there we go. Let's change it to difference here. Control, copy that. I paste it. Now, this is the interesting one. Um, I do have my post message. This is V2. And it's setting the whole name of the file because that's the name of the title of the window. That's OK. But now, if I run this script, there it is. It changed the language with, without me having to go here and click. And of course, it's not clicking. Again, we could find that in many interesting programs, including things like this one. This is a very old program, of course. And again, you can go ahead and look here and pick for actions that you can perform Check this out, the copy only the headers, for example. I could, if if I want my script to automate certain things, and one of the things is grabbing the headers only, you will not find a button here that does that, but I could find it here. Then why should I automate the mouse going there and clicking on it and doing this? No, I just send the message and I get the headers only. And let's test it. Let's see if I could, um, 
I saw remove all sessions. So I have all these sessions in here. Let's try and see if I could just remove them all. So I do control G. Oh yeah, I did get a menu which, here. By the way, I, I want to bring up, which I'm sure viewers have figured this out. In Fiddler, for example, there are so many options. You might spend 10 minutes looking for your item, but hey, in our tool, just start typing a word that's associated to it and you can filter on it. Like that alone, even if you're not coding, sometimes it's nice to be able to find it without going and searching everywhere. There you go. So now at this point, if I double click in here, I would expect this to do something. There it is. It removed all awesome. sessions. Yeah. That's perfect because now I can not only test it and see that it works, but I can copy it. And now my program can do the same thing. It just sends the message. In this case, the message is 301 to that window. And, and you know what? That's a very interesting, there's a good way to figure out what the what message that thing is really understanding. Where each menu has its own ID. That's what is going on. And when you hit Control G, part of what this does here at the bottom is that it tells you what the ID is for a specific command. And there you go. So basically, it's amazing what you can do. You would be surprised from which programs you can still access the old Windows menu. And it is a very good thing for trying to auto automate older programs. It seems to me that Windows is moving away from the Win32 controls, but I bet some point in the future, something similar is going to be available, like an API is going to be available for doing the exact same thing with the newest type of menus, which right now, uh, particularly me, I'm not aware of it, but there should be a way of doing those kind of things. Yeah, so uh, a lot of times people hire us to automate uh, old archaic programs they have, and this is why we got so excited because we're like, you know, yeah. Boy, this is it's just a breeze. Not only is it just simple to use, but it it writes the code for you and it's programmatic. It's an API. This is highly reliable and it's, it's simple. So um, please like the video if you learned something, it really helps us out. And uh, if you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. We release two videos a week. And thanks for watching. Hopefully, you enjoyed that. Have an awesome day. Bye.